Hello viewers, I am Dr. Rubiul. I work as a lecturer of pathology in a medical college hospital and I am making this video for my students and also for you. Hope someone finds this helpful. Today's topic is on Barrett esophagus. In this lecture, we will learn about the definition of Barrett esophagus. Then we will talk briefly about its pathogenesis, various causes, morphology and towards the end of today's lecture we will also talk briefly about its diagnosis and treatment okay a lot of topics so let's begin first question what do we mean by barrett esophagus first i will tell you the definition and then i will explain this definition line by line so as written in your textbook Barrett esophagus may be defined as a metaplasia of squamous mucosa of the esophagus to a more protective columnar type along with goblet cells. Okay, so I am repeating this definition one more time and then I will explain this definition. Barrett esophagus may be defined as metaplasia of the squamous mucosa of esophagus to a more protective columnar type with goblet cells. Now let's explain this definition. And the first thing that we have to remember is what do we mean by metaplasia? Recall from our general pathology lectures, we had seen that metaplasia is a reversible change in which one differentiated cell type, either epithelial or mesenchymal, is replaced by another cell type. Now mark this word replaced because often my students make a mistake they think that metaplasia is a reversible change where one cell is getting changed into another cell for example suppose there was a cell that was flat squamous epithelium and now that type of cell has changed into columnar type of cell but the actual term should be replaced the cells that were squamous cells they actually died due to stress and when the new cells were generated from stem cells they appeared as columnar cells because there was either reprogramming of the stem cells or there was some migration to cope with the stress and now one type of cell is replaced by another type of cell so that is metaplasia and Barrett esophagus is also an example of metaplasia and what is happening here the normal lining epithelium of our esophagus, which is stratified squamous epithelium, that is getting replaced by columnar type of cells. And there is also presence of goblet cells. So this is the definition. And why is this thing happening? It is often happening as a complication of gastroesophageal reflux disease. Now regarding the goblet cells, always remember according to the guidelines provided by American College of Gastroenterology, Barrett esophagus requires endoscopic abnormality. There should be columnar lined esophagus and also there should be identification of goblet cells in a biopsy that is taken from that abnormal area. So we have already mentioned that it is a complication of chronic gastroesophageal reflux disease and always remember that it is a pre-malignant condition. What do we mean by pre-malignant condition? It means that if we have this condition there is increased risk of development of cancer or development of malignancy. So always remember Barrett esophagus is a pre-malignant condition and it can evolve. So first there will be Barrett esophagus, there is columnar metaplasia and goblet cells and then there will be dysplasia among these cells and if this condition persists there will be carcinoma in situ that is still confined in the mucosa and ultimately when there is invasion there will be full-fledged esophageal adenocarcinoma. So that's why Barrett's esophagus is called pre-malignant condition and the sequences are first there is Barrett esophagus then there is dysplasia then carcinoma in situ and finally there is esophageal adenocarcinoma. Now why chronic gastroesophageal reflux disease is leading to Barrett esophagus? In order to understand this 
we should know what is happening in gastroesophageal reflux disease. Now, whenever you have this term reflux in certain term, you will need to know that it is actually indicating backflow. So normally, food particles flow from the esophagus to the stomach. They don't go the other way because there are sphincters to prevent backflow. The lower esophageal sphincter is responsible for preventing backflow of the content of the stomach to the esophagus. But in gastroesophageal reflux disease, there is transient lower esophageal sphincter relaxation and this is thought to be the major cause of gastroesophageal reflux disease. And why is there transient relaxation? These relaxations are thought to be mediated via vagal pathways and they can be triggered by gastric distension. Now gastroesophageal reflux disease can also occur after sudden increase in intra-abdominal pressure, for example after coughing, straining or bending and some other conditions are also associated with gastroesophageal reflux disease and they include alcohol, tobacco use, obesity, central nervous system depression, pregnancy, delayed gastric emptying and increased gastric volume. So all these things can lead to reflux and when there is gastroesophageal reflux disease that is causing damage to the esophagus because always remember although the esophagus is resistant to abrasive injury it is sensitive to acid. So whenever there is reflux of acid and other food particles it is damaging mainly the acid is damaging the esophageal epithelium so that is the time when esophagus decides to replace those epithelium or those stratified squamous epithelium with something that is more stronger or something that is more resistant to acid mainly the columnar types of cells and since those types of cells are usually seen in the intestine, so it is also referred as intestinal metaplasia. So what will be the morphological features of Barrett esophagus? Patches or tongues of red velvety mucosa extending upwards from gastroesophageal junction. Always remember that uh, the esophagus is lined by stratified squamous epithelium. What do we mean by stratified? It means multi-layered. Squamous epithelium is a flattened type of epithelium and when the esophagus ends and the stomach begins, that means in the gastroesophageal junction, we see a transition from these stratified squamous epithelium into columnar epithelium. So that is the normal gastroesophageal junction and always remember the normal squamous mucosa is pale in color whereas metaplastic mucosa is red or salmon colored. So there will be patches or tongues of these red velvety mucosa that are actually metaplastic mucosa and they are extending upwards from the gastroesophageal junction. That is the first thing that you have to remember regarding morphological feature and one additional thing you have to remember is that we can classify Barrett esophagus according to the length of these segments. If the length is more than 3 cm or equals to 3 cm, we will say that these are long segments. And if the length of these segments are less than 3 cm, then that is classified as short segment. So what are the microscopic features? Esophageal squamous epithelium is replaced by columnar epithelium of intestinal type along with goblet cells. Now goblet cells are diagnostic of Barrett esophagus. Always remember they have distinct mucus vacuoles and these mucus vacuoles stain pale blue and they make rest of the cytoplasm appear like a wine goblet. And there may be dysplasia, low grade or high grade. So how can we diagnose a case of Barrett esophagus? It can be identified only through endoscopy and biopsy. So what are the treatment options of Barrett esophagus? Follow up of low grade dysplasia or a single focus of high grade dysplasia with endoscopy and biopsy and these types of follow ups are done at regular intervals. 
Other treatment options for more severe cases will include esophagectomy, photodynamic therapy, laser ablation, endoscopic mucosectomy, etc. So this concludes our lecture on Barrett esophagus. I hope this lecture was helpful. If you like my videos, do comment, share, subscribe and let me know. And for my students, I will also recommend you to go through your textbooks to know more. Okay, that's all for today. Until next time, take care and stay blessed. Thank you.